Hello, all my fellow gear addicts. It has come to my attention, kind of a while ago actually, that Boss is coming out with the HM2 with the Wazacraft edition. But I'm here to tell you why I should get in frame and also why you shouldn't care because we've had the Metal Muff all along. The Metal Muff with Top Boost. This thing is gnarly and I'm going to tell you why this is a great piece of underappreciated gear. Pulling this clip. Because that would be too easy. That would just be way too easy. So anyways, yeah, a lot of us know that the Boss HM2 is coming out with a Wazacraft edition. There's a lot of people that are really excited for it. But I've had this metal muff since I was like 14 or 15 years old. Just a little dipshit in uh, ninth grade or so, I think, is when I got this thing. And it has just absolutely been a stellar pedal ever since. When I was in ninth grade or so, I was looking for a distortion pedal to go in front of my PV Valve King 212, which I've mentioned in the last video, because uh, the, uh, yeah, the distortion on it is pretty good, but it's not quite metal core enough that I was looking for, you know, listening to Bring Me the Horizon, I Killed the Prom Queen, Parkway Drive, all those really great metal core bands that we all know and love. You ain't sponsoring this. <laughs> that tone from the Valve King was just not gonna cut it. Obviously, there's the, the metal zone that everybody had. There's the metal core that I had heard about. Ooh, that sounded interesting. But uh, one of my dad's guitar forum buddies, that's right, dad's guitar forum buddies back at it again when I'm a child, uh, pointed me towards the electroharmonics line of Big Muff pedals. And I was looking at them, I'm like, what's a fuzz? I don't want a fuzz, I want a distortion. But anyways, uh, he pointed me towards the Electroharmonics Metal Muff. I looked at all the options. I saw, ooh, a little bit of top boost. That might, that might come in handy. Make my wicked guitar solos that I can't play really scream and make the neighbors scream. So threw it on the Christmas wish list or whatever, however it was. I don't know. Maybe I was mowing lawns and got it. I really cannot remember for the life of me. I'm just gonna default to I was a lucky kid and got it for Christmas. But anyways, uh, let me take a look at my notes here so I don't get off uh, topic. The Electroharmonics Metal Muff was launched way back in the early days of, I don't know. The Wayback Machine actually didn't have Electroharmonics categorized at all. I did one just for November 1st of 2020 is what it came out to. Just so that way there's at least something for EHX on there, because for some reason, like, the biggest pedal manufacturer on the planet, next to Boss, I think, that didn't have a Wayback Machine. But anyways, uh, the best that I could do is, uh, okay, so the EHX product page, it's really a re weird layout. They've got, like, the product and then, like, a ton of mentions underneath it in the page. The oldest mention of the Metal Muff goes all the way back to April 10th of 2009, but we can do better than that. Ultimate Guitar published an article on April 26th of 2007, but we can do one better than that. A man by the name of Trigger J uploaded the first video onto YouTube with Metal Muff in the title, and that was uploaded on March 13th, 2007, titled Metal Muff Sample. It's just a video of him playing camera mic, him just playing guitar in his room. It's a 2007 video. It's great. Check it out. Links in the description. But one better than that, SonicState.com, whoever the hell they are, had a article talking about the Pocket Metal Muff in uh, July 6th of 2006. So there's at least some trace of the Metal Muff. Now I don't, I don't know if it came out with the same time as the Metal Muff with Top Boost. That seems kind of like something manufacturers would do now: is give us the Big Daddy that costs more. And then, you know, little little sun pedals that cost less, but do an equally good job for the most part. Probably announced Winter Nam 2006 or Summer Nam 2007. Of course, if it was announced Summer Nam 2007, then that uh, Sonic State article... Actually, no. Damn it, my notes are wrong. Probably Summer Nam 2006, if I had to guess. Anyways, the predecessor to this uh, metal muff pedal is going to be like all of your big muff pedals that dad used. Well, metalcore kids dads used. So I've actually got one. I've got the Electroharmonics Russian uh, big muff pie. This thing is nice, sounds super fat, but it is not metal. 
It is really good though, but it's not metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also take off another pedal from my board because metal buff with top boost is a two pedal wide boy. And there we have it. We have the EHX metal muff sitting right next to my Earthquaker Palisades right on my pedal board. So I got four buttons on two pedals. What I plan to do is compare the tone of my 6505 with the Palisades and then go onto the clean channel of the 6505 with the metal muff so we can see how it emulates an overdriven 6505 because that's sort of the tone that a lot of the bands of the time had, and that's the tone that I was really chasing with the metal muff. So we'll see how close we can get to it on the clean channel of the 6505. Okay, so I think I've got everything going that I need to record. I've got FL recording the guitar, I've got one GoPro, I've got two GoPro, and I've got you right there. So anyways, uh, yeah, let's just start off with the 6505 and my black cat hopping up in the chair. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but yeah, so the 6505 on the overdrive channel. So those are the settings right there. Obviously, tone control all the way up, bridge pickup, and uh, yeah, you can see on the uh, on my foot camera there, pardon the dog hair. If you don't like dog hair, get off my channel. You can see the settings on the Palisade. So four, three, the, and then the ones in the middle. Uh, and both of the little switches are to the left. So let's just go ahead and uh, rip some riffs and uh, see what the see what I consider to be like my go-to stock sound for when I'm just jamming or recording. <laughs> there's a little sample of what my typical sound setup is like now let's kill the drive go over to the clean and turn on the metal muff no top boost just yet but let's go ahead and take a look I went ahead and just set all the uh, rhythm channel settings to uh, try to make it a fairly neutral channel sound seems a bit more scooped let's go back so right away what I'm kind of seeing is it's missing a little bit of that bass so let's go ahead and just drive the base up. Actually, let me wait. The trash truck is going by. See if you fling shit all over the neighbor's yard. You probably can't even hear that. Seems like every time a YouTuber is like, oh, sorry about the sound, I can, I can never hear it. So anyways, let's dial this base up. Ah, right away. That EQ knob is so powerful on its own right there. It's different. It's very different than what my typical sound is. That being said, at first it's like, ooh. But then you kind of like. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm playing. But point is, you get into it, you start getting in the groove, and it's like, man, that is pretty tasty. I kind of like that. Back over to the stock sound. 
Now that almost kind of makes me feel like my typical sound has a fucking pillow right over the speaker. So anyways, let's get over to the uh, metal muff and start twisting some knobs around. <laughs> Swedish chainsaw, anybody? <laughs> Sounds terrible. That's kind of the point. You know, a lot of people say that the HM2 is really good for diming all the way. Not going to dime the volume, but let's brace for impact here. At first, I really didn't like that. But God, it's just like there's that underlying bass in there, which... That's, honestly, oh, that's, that's really nasty. God, that sounds so nasty. Anyways, let's dial everything back down into the middle. Let's see what the pedal is telling us. It kind of sounds like an old crate amp with everything in the middle. Let's go ahead and fine tune it a little bit. I'm leaving the volume where it is because I don't want to screw up my, my DBs. <laughs> Let's see how that compares to the 6505. <laughs> If I'm, if I'm a kid and I can't afford a 6505, but I can afford a decent pedal platform, like maybe even just a Boss Katana or, you know, any sort of uh, decently clean tube amp, I think that metal muff gets you, I think it gets you kind of right, right kind of around where you need to be. It ain't going to be exact, but I think, I think it's pretty decent. <laughs> And one thing I was kind of playing around with earlier that I noticed is that sort of when you have like a seventh chord, I think. It's so like a power chord and then you add the first unwound string, two frets up. It doesn't quite stand out as well on the metal muff as it does with the actual amp. All right, so I've got my Schecter here, the one with the EMG, or the EMG, the one with the Seymour Duncan blackouts and the kill switch. 
Forgot to mention, the SG, that's actually a kill pot on the volume. You can click it in. Pretty neat. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, this one typically is a little darker of a tone. The wiring's messed up in it somewhere. It's a passive EMG HZ with an active Seymour Duncan and kind of in the middle position. Kind of sounds flubby. But then down on the blackout. Trying to do a kickflip and I can't hear. But anyways, uh, this one is in drop B, so you are going to notice lower tuning, but also kind of the, uh, yeah, just the sort of darker tone of the Seymour Duncan blackout. So yeah, there's a little sample of that same, those same riffs. So now let's do the blackouts on the metal muff. So yeah, much, much darker. But anyways, the metal muff can definitely overcompensate for that darkness. pretty interesting even with the darker pickups in this guitar you can still definitely hear that higher note in those chords now let's go ahead and turn the uh, treble up on the metal muff a little bit and see if I can't see if I can't bring that out a little more turn that distortion down a wee bit The darkness of this just makes it sound so much more tame. Anyways, let's go ahead and kick on that top boost and see how it really changes the sound. definitely makes the solo stand out a bit there. Let me turn my, I'm going to arm my feet on my reverb and my top boost here and we'll just kind of have a fun little riff. I got all nervous thinking about how my feet are going to have to work at the same time as my hands. Let's just, let's try that again. That just, oh, it makes it really just punch you. It just makes it punch right out of that sound there. You know, going from the... Now, that's obviously with the top boost down here at, you know, a little bit under nine o'clock. Let's venture into the danger zone, shall we? Ooh, that top boost It's very, very, very powerful. Woo. And with great power comes great destruction. Yeah, I'm not, uh, 
I think I think I think I'm gonna keep it down at about uh, the nine o'clock position there. I think I'm good on that. Let's go ahead and just compare that sound to uh, how it sounds with the 6505. So yeah, with the 6505 and the boost, it does sound a bit darker with the, uh, with the Seymour Duncan blackouts, but I think, I don't know, man. What do you guys think? I definitely, I had that metal muff on my board for, I'm talking years, until I had a 6505 like last year, that metal muff was what I got my distortion from. And I never once really thought like, man, if only I had a better pedal, or if only I got my distortion from a good, good amp with a boost, because I didn't know about boost. What's up, Astro? She's got a sweater. It's cold. You know, that metal muff, it, it made me a happy camper for a very long time. And I just remembered the Palisades has a boost. Definitely not <laughs> quite as powerful as the top boost, but let's be real, kind of a good thing. While the top boost is a fun thing to play with, it's definitely easy to get carried away with. It's easy for somebody just to just to prank you and spike your eggnog and turn your top boost really not even that far to where you notice. Maybe it goes from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, and that, that can be a lot there. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. I definitely think that the uh, Metal Muff gets overshadowed by the god that is the MT2 and the Metal Core, the ML2, which... Actually, I never even really hear anybody mention, and I kind of want to do a video on that. Problem is, I don't have an ML2. But anyways, yeah, so, like I was saying, I'm, I'm starting to ramble like an old person, because I am old. Uh, Metal Muff, I like it. I used it for years. I had tons of fun with it. I don't use it anymore, because I've got a 6505 and a Palisades. Same kind of reason I don't use a Green Screamer anymore, because I've got a Palisades. It can do that function. I've got equipment that can do what I wanted the other older equipment to do now. But yeah, anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. My name is Levi. This has been another underappreciated gear. What was it? Un no, underappreciated gear. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for gear that you want to see done next. And as always, I will see all of you guys in the next episode. Peace.